as a non-binary person, what do you have to tell me about my identity? Because I know for a fact I'm not confused. Okay, next question. Great statement. Today, we're we'll checking out Candice Owen, question and answer, Crazy Liberals, Black Lives Matter. Guys, if you're new here, then sure to like, share, subscribe to my channel, we'll enjoy more of this kind of content. Guys, let's get straight into this. As a non-binary person, what do you have to tell me about my identity? Because I know for a fact I'm not confused. Okay, next question. Great statement. That's a statement. That's a statement. Okay, you know your identity. You're not confused. Congratulations, sweetheart. Thank you very much for your statement. Hi, how are you? Hi, I was wondering where you got your um, statement, your what statistic about like people this? who transition, detransition, as well as the that you are infertile after transitioning because yeah. I myself take hormones. I do testosterone injections mm -hmm. and I've gone through a lot of doctors and none of them told me that was true. Okay. So on my podcast, I actually cite all the sources. If you look up my name and my podcast, you can, I mean, it's in so many articles. And also, as I said, sexchangeregret.org actually lists all of these statistics with their sources. Um, so obviously I don't, I, I can't give you a hyperlink as I'm standing on the stage, but you can definitely find it on my podcast and you can find it on sexchangeregret.com. Thank you for the question. That was like the first question we got there. Hi. Um, according to Britannica, the definition of the nuclear family has expanded with the advert of same-sex marriage. Children in nuclear families may be couples biological or adopted offspring. Does this mean that the merch you sell supporting you know, nuclear families means that you support trans couples adopting, gay couples adopting, and spreading this rhetoric that you yeah. talk about? So you're talking about the expansion of definition. So right now they've expanded the definition of woman to include biological males. This gets back into what I was saying earlier about the left controlling linguistics and just pretending that, okay, a nuclear family can now be two trans parents um, that are adopting a child. That is not the nuclear family unit that I am talking about. Um, I believe that I am talking about marriage between a male and a female, which naturally and biologically produces children. Uh, yeah. So no, I do not take that new updated definition of what it means to be a woman or what it means to be a nuclear family. Thank you for your question, though. Hi. Hello. My question is a little bit of a different speed. Uh, earlier today, you mentioned uh, Patricia Colors or somebody from the BLM movement, and you said that her only qualifying factors for speaking about different things and issues was because she was black. And during the White House hearing about white supremacy, you mm -hmm. was on that. And a question was asked whether white supremacy is a threat or not. And your only qualification to speaking on that was being black. So what do you say to people that say I, you're being a hypocrite? Yeah. So I didn't say on this stage that Patrice's only qualification was being black. I said that people gave her tens of millions of dollars, had no idea where it was going to go, and were happy to do it because she was pirating. She just kept saying black lives matter, black lives matter. It was stupid. Mm -hmm. They lost their money. Bad investment. Oh, well, too bad. So sad. Um, regarding qualifications to speak on what's harming black America, you just have to be able to examine actual statistics, right? Are you, are you telling me, would you honestly say that when you walked into this room today, you were afraid that white supremacy was going to kill you? I ask this to black people to be honest. Are you afraid that a Klansman is going to come down the, down the street on horseback and pick you up? Be honest. Um, I'm not, I'm personally not afraid. Okay, but. so that's it. So when I was speaking at the congressional testimony, I was saying, my experience being black in America, I don't know any black people that are fearful to walk down the street because they think a Klansman's gonna come get them, right? Sure. But I can list you tons of black people that grow up in poverty, that grow up in the hood, that grow up around gang culture that are fearful when you examine black on black crime rates. When you, when I was just talking about illiteracy rates, I said that I could list a hundred things the black community is suffering from today before I got to white supremacy, and yet the focus and the emphasis in the school system has been to brainwash us to believe that white people want to kill us around every single corner, and I think that that's a harmful ideology because it doesn't allow us to actually focus on the things that we're suffering from. You know, number one, I would say, is, is father absence. We need to get our families back together. We have to stop letting the government raise us. Um, I do believe, uh, I agree with some of the things you just said, but at the end of your point, you just mentioned a father absence and stuff like that. Yeah. Uh, and studies are actually shows that black men who are actually in their home participate with their children 
more than any other race. Yeah. So great. So what do you what you just said is a fallacy then? No, 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 no. I'm talking about when there's not a black father in the home, uh -huh. right? So every natural ill follows in the black community. So when you separate the black family, if you look at statistics between black families that are together and white families that are together, the poverty rate, I mean, it, they're, they're both doing well. You're, it's a two-point difference between white and black families. When you remove and you break down the black family, it's unbelievable, right? It's a pathway to prison. It's a pathway to illiteracy. So I'm only talking about broken down black families. I'm not saying when the black family unit is together. That brings us back to the Winslows, Family Matters, and the greatest show that was ever on television. I do want to get some more people. I want to get some more people. Thank you so much for your question. First of all, uh, hi. Hi. First of all, thank you for coming to the campus. Uh, second you. of all, I was wondering if you could speak a little bit more to your faith. Um, as a Christian myself, I know you're a Christian. Um, I saw the video you put up uh, about the Christian debate with your husband and Allie B. Mm -hmm. Stucky. I was wondering if you could talk a little bit more about your faith and how that's kind of inspired you. Yeah. So, uh, hmm. well, you know then that I am sort of in between a rock and a hard place right now. I am Protestant. My husband is Catholic. Um, I'm looking more at the Catholic faith for a lot of different reasons. Um, first and foremost, because I, I do believe that males lead the household, and so my children are being raised Catholic right now. Um, and so currently at our house, we go to two different churches, which is not ideal, but for hol holidays, we go to the Catholic church. I was raised by my grandfather. He was by the book, uh, when I say in terms of the Bible, the reason why he was never invested in um, secularism of any sort is because he thought that all of it was the devil. He was like that devout of a Christian. He didn't celebrate any holidays um, and really kept to really just his faith and his family. And so I always say that I was very immersed in scripture when I was a child and then I very much resented it once I got into school because it wasn't cool to be a person that read the Bible. It still isn't cool to be a person that has faith, especially if you're on a college campus. It's something that is looked down upon. And it's actually one of the pillars of leftism that I wish I had talked about tonight is atheism, which was also crucial to Marxist beliefs. They, you were not allowed to have faith if you lived in a socialist or a communist society uh, because they wanted the government to become your God. They wanted you to believe in nothing else but the government. And you're seeing that take place today as atheism is being encouraged. Yeah. It's a pleasure to meet you. I've been Hi. wanting this for a while. So my name is Joshua. I am from Brentwood, New York. You guys should Google Joshua Chan, Brentwood, New York. Great person. I'm great. Um, anyway, <laughs> so just it's about health. I want to switch to, to health care. My favorite topic in the world. I love What's health. that? Health care. Health care. Okay. Great. Ms. Owens, Disaster. I'd like to begin by underscoring the importance of health care as a fundamental right. Many Americans, including working class white, black, Hispanic, conservatives, mm -hmm. believe that everyone should have access to quality health care without financial barriers. Additionally, as conservatives also prioritize fiscal responsibility, it's worth noting that the United States spends more money on health care than any developed nation, mm -hmm. yet lags behind in health outcomes. It's, yep. a, it's a situation where it seems like we're paying too much and not getting enough in return. Conservative, and this is the question now. Conservative healthcare policies have often emphasized individual choice and market-based solutions. Mm -hmm. However, it's, oft, it's been observed that private health insurance companies often prioritize profit margins over patient care and can lead to yeah. administrative efficiencies. In contrast, universal healthcare systems as seen in many developed countries not only ensure that healthcare is a human right for all, but also achieve a greater cost effectiveness and efficiency. Yeah. From a moral and fiscal standpoint, it's a compelling argument to eliminate the middleman, reduce administrative costs, and negotiate lower drug prices to make healthcare more accessible and affordable for all Americans. Yeah. Yeah. Lastly, no one in this room likes their health insurance company. No one. Yeah. Essentially they, 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 especially when the health insurance companies deny care. People like their doctors. Okay, okay, I get it, I get it, I get it, I get it. Last question, sorry, sorry. Okay, so, uh, how can conservatives health, conservative health care policies yeah. align with these moral principles of equity and compassion to ensure that everyone can access health care without financial hardship? Okay, and okay, 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 okay. Uh, yeah. We're going to do two, sorry, more, two more questions after this, maybe? Okay, that's a long one. Two more, guys, I'm sorry, we're not going to be able to get to all of you. Um, so, First and foremost, the healthcare system is an absolute disaster. I have an entire episode where I sat down with someone and discussed this. Um, people wrongly believe that what's currently happening is our, our healthcare in America is an example of capitalism in the free markets. It absolutely is not. It is the exact opposite. Um, the fact that you walk in to a, a clinic, you don't know what anything costs. You're essentially blindfolded. You go to the hospital and then you get a magical bill and they say, yeah. oh, that Tylenol that you had, we didn't tell you it cost $400 for one tablet is, is just completely wrong. America is not an example of free markets and being able to actually choose. Um, so that is that is the first problem, is that the bureaucracies, everything behind it just needs to completely die. If we actually had a free market solution to healthcare, and it's interesting because I'm married to someone that's from the UK, where yes, they do have government sponsored healthcare via the NHS, but it's a disaster and they're all able to pay privately and they're able to compete and give people the lowest the lower price. 
it, it's phenomenal. So an example of that that Charlie Kirk always gives is LASIK surgery. Back when LASIK surgery was being covered by insurance, it was astronomical, the price to get your eyes fixed. And then insurance said, we'll no longer cover it. We consider it to be cosmetic. And now you can get your eyes fixed with LASIK for like $3,000. So it went from being $25,000 per night to $3,000 because they allowed Whoa. competition. So when health insurance companies were actually removed from the equation, it then became a free market environment and doctors were going, okay, I'll compete and here's how much I'm willing to do it for. So all of that needs to be disrupted so that doctors can actually compete for our dollars. And I think the health insurance companies are an, an, an absolute scam and I hope that it collapses in the near future. Yeah. Right. So we try to get two more questions. I'm sorry. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I get it. But health, it's an important topic, so I'm glad you brought it up. Hi. Um, so you mentioned earlier about the importance of reading and how that helps people be more enlightened and speak um, and think more freely. What do you think about that um, when we're thinking about book bans happening in states like Florida? Um, so I want to be careful uh, because now we're getting a lot of books and I'm not sure that they are the books that should be in classrooms like White Fragility, which they're you know passing around, which is just really state topics that are being implanted into people's head. Um, I'm talking about you know true education, like people actually learning hard academics and not fluffy ideologies. Um, but the, what book ban are you talking about when they're banning like CRT? Uh, I believe there's been a variety of books um, related to... But they're to not banning you from buying them. They're saying we're not going to have them in the school system. Uh, yes, at school, yeah, libraries, totally and it's also with LGBTQ plus books and related topics. For kindergartners, yeah. I, I think sexuality and uh, little five-year-olds don't mix. Yeah, true. Like, I really don't get the reason why you're going to be selling like, LGBTQ books to children. Like These guys should grow up to know what they want. Like... See, I feel this life, it's all about stages. Like, you go to a point where you understand some things that, like, let's say, let's be honest, when you were, like, 15, 16, there's some music you're listening to that when you listen to it now, like, the meaning changes. Like, you, you're like, nah, this was not what I thought this was before. And it's crazy, I believe, that we should be given the chance to grow before we, like, we can assimilate some information. Because I really get it where... Like when my mom says, give it time, like don't rush things, like allow it flow. Like it's going to come, it's going to come to you. Like I honestly believe that in this life, you have to give it time. Like you can't force children to become who they are not or tell them about some things. Like you can be a boy, you can be a girl, you can be this. No, I feel you should give them time to understand who they are. And for you to actually tell a girl that she can be a boy, I honestly believe is a fallacy. It doesn't make sense. It's not supposed to be happening. You're not supposed to tell a functioning grown woman, a functioning grown girl, like you can be a boy and a boy you can be a girl. Like I honestly believe that it's not supposed to work. This is why I'm rooting for Donald Trump because I honestly believe that he's gonna stop a lot of this nonsense from happening. But guys, don't think about this. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe to my channel, and see more amazing videos like this. I'll see you next time, guys. Best.